Hello and welcome to another episode of Scripting for Artists. My name is Sibren and this episode is about Blender Collections. These were introduced in Blender 2.80 and replaced the numbered scene layers and groups. I'm not recording this as usual at the Blender Institute, but I'm home right now, as so many of you. And as a result, the video will be less scripted and I won't have any slides to show. So we'll just dive into Blender and I will show things there. So in the outliner here, you can see that we have a scene collection with uh, Suzanne in it, like one object, and it has that default collection, collection one. So given that this thing here is called the scene collection, let's look at the scene object and see if we can find a collection property. So here we have Suzanne. And as a reminder, here we have the convenience variables. So capital C stands for bpy.context and capital D stands for bpy.data. Um, you can't use these in your own scripts, but you can use them here in the console while you're figuring things out. So let's take a look at scene.call, then press tab, and you can see it already has a collection property. Um, we can get its name. It's called master collection because it's the, 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 the main scene collection. Um, and it has a property called objects. And if you convert that to a list, just arrow up and then type list with parentheses around the line. And there you can see that one object, Suzanne, that was here. Collection.objects gives you all the objects that are directly linked into that collection. So let's see what happens when we move Suzanne into collection one. It's still indirectly inside the scene collection because it's inside collection one and collection one is inside the scene collection, but it's no longer in the scene collections dot object. If you want to have really everything, then look at all underscore objects. This is like a magical view that will give you everything in the, the collection itself. So it contains everything that objects also contains but then it also contains everything that is inside collections, in the collection, in the collection, in the collection, in the collection. And as you can see, we have Suzanne. So as many things in Blender collections have to have a unique name because they are stored in data. So we have bpy.data or in the console, capital D, dot collections. And this gives us the collection one. It does not contain the scenes master collection, but it contains all the other collections. So here we also can get the collections collection one object and convert it to a list to see what's in there. And again, of course, there is Suzanne in there. So this already gives you a way to, given the name of a collection, iterate over all the objects in that collection. So maybe you want to write an exporter that exports uh, everything in one particular collection. Now you know how to access it. And I'm saying iterate over the objects. Uh, let's just take a look at how that would happen just to refresh your memory. So let's say we have a nice little Bohemian Rhapsody going on here with four Suzannes in that one collection. If we say, list the collection dot objects, then we get all four of them, of course. So let's take a little example of how it would look like in a little bit more complex code. You would basically say, well, collection is, call or call or what you want to call it is collections collection one. And then I can say for ob in call dot objects print ob name is Op name, and this is a format string. It's really useful. You can just type an F before the opening quotes, and then within curly braces, you can write any expression like op.name. And what you can see here, it lists all the names of all the objects. So it loops with the for loop, it loops over all the objects in the collection and then does something with it. And this could be calling an exporter or this could be setting a material or it could be changing the name or whatever you want to do, of course. And in our case, it just prints the name. So let's take a look at creating a collection from Python. This is also done through the data.collections collection. So D.collections, and let's take a look. What do we have? 
we have a new function. So let's type new tab, and you can see that you can type name. And now we have a new collection called demo. You want to use this collection as it's given to you because, of course, this is now available at the PyData collections demo. Ah, this happens to the best of us. Everybody makes typos, don't worry about it. We can get, given the name demo, we can get the collection again. And this is a big, big pitfall that you could fall into because you may think that that collection that you just created with the name demo will have the name demo. Well, let's take a look at what happens when we do it again. Exactly the same function call, just telling Blender to make me a new collection called demo. But this time we already have a collection that is called demo. And as I said, collections have to have a unique name. So what happens is that it calls it demo.001 as you're used from Blender. But now the name that we ask Blender to give the collection is not the same as the name that the collection was given. So if you now access BPI data collections demo, you will see that you get demo, of course, and not demo.001. So what I would say is always when you create a new collection, assign it to a name like this, and then you're sure that you have the right collection. Afterwards, you can change the name. Like scraping for artists. And it will have the new name. One thing you may notice in the outliner up here is that the name isn't there. Like the collection is not there yet. So it exists in the blend file, it exists in, in memory, but it's not linked to the scenes master collection yet. So how do we do that? Well, we go to the master collection and then dot and tab to just get a list of everything that's in there. And one thing you'll notice is this property called children. And that contains all the child collections. So that's all the collections that are linked into this collection. So let's take a look there. And there you find a function called link. At this collection as a child of this collection, well, it's a bit cryptic, two times this collection referring to different things, but I think you get the gist. Uh, we had our collection in the name collection. So keep your eyes on the outliner while I press enter. There we go. And now it is part of the scene collection. Linking objects into this new collection is pretty much the same thing as linking other collections into it. Instead of using .children.link, you use .objects.link. So let's take a look. We have our collection. It has an empty, empty set of objects. Nothing is in there. And we can use .objects.link to link an object to it. And like that, we can add Suzanne.003 to it. Now let's put this into a, a bit more of a script. So I'm going to subdivide here and change to the text editor, create a new script, call it uh, move stuff.py, always start with input bpy. And now let's say we want to move everything that is inside one collection and move it into another. Uh, so we have to have a collection from is bpy data collections collection one. And we have something similar, collection two is bpy data collection sfa. So now we have our two collections. Let's loop over one and then add all the objects that we find into the other. So for ob in call from dot objects call to dot objects dot link ob. And this will already copy well, link all the objects from one collection into the other. 
what's left to move is to unlink from the other collection. So we need to unlink from call from. But that also means removing that object from call from dot objects. So that means that by unlinking, we're changing the thing that we're looping over currently. And this is not a good idea. You shouldn't do this. It, it, at best, it will be uh, unpredictable. And at worst, it will crash Blender and you will lose your data. The most simple solution for this, of course, there's many of them, but the simplest is to keep track of the objects that you want to unlink. So let's say to unlink is an empty list. And in this list, we will keep track of whatever we want to unlink later. So we can say to unlink dot append ob. And once this for loop is done, uh, we can un loop over this and unlink everything. So for ob in to unlink, call from dot objects dot unlink ob. And this will work. Let's give it a try. And my script failed, of course. Let's take a look at the console. If we look at the terminal from which I started Blender, you can see that it gives me a runtime error, object Suzanne.003 already in collection SFA. And OK, fair enough. It doesn't like us linking an object that is already in there. So there's basically two ways in which to avoid um, your script breaking because of an error like this. Uh, one is to avoid the error to begin with, and the other is to handle the error when it occurs. And I think in this case, it's easiest to just catch the error and make sure that our script keeps running when that happens. So the error says that line number eight is the problem. So let's take a look at line number eight. So line eight is this line in the code. It's the linking itself, of course, that goes wrong. And you can tell Python to just give this line a try and see what happens. So literally, you say try, and then a colon, and like the for loop and the if and the other things that we've seen that end in a colon, you have to indent the rest. So that indicates what it needs to try. And then when we look at the terminal, we saw the runtime error that is right over here. That is the type of the exception. And I won't go into detail as to what it all means. Um, just know that you have to type it here so that Python knows that if an exception occurs in this try block of this type, then execute this code over here. And in our case, this is fine. This happens when uh, the object is already in the collection, which means that we're happy because we wanted to link it there. It already is there, so it is all fine. So we can let this pass, which literally means just type pass there. This tells Python, don't do anything here. Ignore the error. Nothing happened, really. The next line is, of course, still important because we still want to handle this as though the object moved. So. The linking went bad because it was already there. It still needs to be unlinked from the original collection so we can just keep going. And this should fix our code. Let's give it a try. And there we have it. All the objects have been moved into SFA, have been taken away from collection. And of course, we can do the opposite. We can say, well, just flip the names around, run the script again, and they're back again when this started. So this is how you can move objects between collections. One final thing we could do, which maybe is a little bit useless, but just to give a demo, um, we can also remove the collection that we moved everything from. So that will be bpy data collections.remove call from. So let's flip them around again. We move all the objects from collection one to SFA. And then once that is done, we remove the collection. And there we go. Now the collection one is gone. All the objects have been moved again. And that's how you work with collections from Python.
To end this episode, uh, let's take another look at the outliner. And there are a few toggles that you can set, like the restriction toggles. So let's take a look. If I want to change the viewport rendering of this collection, you can see in the Python tooltip, which you can enable in the user preferences, um, you can see that BPI data collections SFA.hide viewport is the thing to go to. So let's take a look there. We take our data collections SFA dot hide. Well, there you already have hide render, hide select, hide viewport. And you can just set them to true, back to false. And you can play around with this. And it pretty much does what you would expect from clicking on the icons. So that's it. If you have any questions, leave comments and um, I'll see you in the next episode.